Assalamu alaikum everyone. In Hinduism, there is a concept of pantheism, and according to that, they consider everything as God. They consider the stars, sun, moon, trees, and everything else as God. They even consider animals and humans as God as well. But in Islam, there is no such concept. They consider that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is only one God and everything else is not God. And that is why they don't worship any other God other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They consider that Allah is near to everything, but they don't consider that Allah is everything. Everything belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after its death. Now even though these two religions have a significant difference with regards to their concept or, and understanding of God, there are many things, many characteristics that are mentioned in Quran about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we find the same characteristics mentioned in Hindu scriptures with regards to their God. We don't find the exact name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Hindu scriptures but we find his characteristics. Before I begin, for those people who may not like this video, let me make it very clear that I would not be giving my own opinion in this video, rather I would be quoting the exact verses from the scriptures. You can verify the things from the references that I would be providing in this video. So let's begin. Bismillah. In Upanishad, which is a Hindu scripture, chapter number 6, section 2, verse number 1, it is clearly mentioned that he is one without a second. Now, over here, he refers to the God. So, according to that, he is one. Now, you would be amazed to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says a very similar thing in the Quran with a little bit change in the wordings, but the context is almost the same. He says in Surah al ikhras chapter number 112, verse number 1, he says, Say he is Allah who is one. Again, in Upanishad chapter number 6, verse number 9, it is mentioned that of him there are neither parents nor Lord. In chapter number 4, verse number 19, it is mentioned that there is no likeliness to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, in the same chapter that I quoted before, Surah Al-Ikhlas, chapter number 112, in verse 2, 3, and 4, he says, Allah, the eternal refuge, he neither begets nor is born, nor is there to him any equivalent. Muslims also believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't have any parents. They also believe that no one is superior to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hence, there is no Lord of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Further on, in Upanishad chapter number 4, verse number 20, it's mentioned that his form cannot be seen. No one see him with the eye. Again, the similar thing is also mentioned in Quran in Surah Al-Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 103. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Vision perceives him not, but he perceives all vision, and he is subtle the acquainted. Now, according to this, no eye can see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he can see everything. Further on, in Bhagavad Gita, which is a very popular book of Hinduism, it is mentioned in chapter number 10, verse number 3. It's mentioned that he who knows me as the unborn, as the beginningless, as the supreme lord of the worlds. Now, I had already said that it's mentioned in Quran that he is not born. He is unborn, in fact. It is also mentioned that he is eternal refuge, meaning he is beginningless. And in Quran, in the first chapter itself, the first verse is, all praises belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the universe. Vedas are the most sacred and authentic Hindu scriptures. And in Yajur Veda, chapter number 32, verse number 3, it is mentioned that there is no image of him. It further says, as he is unborn, he deserves our worships. Now, Muslims do not have the image of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nor they believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is born. And the first thing that one has to testify when he enters Islam, he has to say that there is no worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are just few of the verses that I have quoted. In fact, there are numerous such verses. If I could have quoted all of them, then it could have taken me more than an hour. If you guys want a part 2 of this video in which I shall be quoting more such verses, then do let me know in the comment section below. Inshallah, I'll do that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives all of us the true understanding of the true religion. Ameen.